Hello, this is Lois Gibson. I've been the forensic artist for Houston, Texas and all the surrounding areas for 40 years, and I've helped catch over 1,266 criminals by just talking to witnesses and from their memory, getting a sketch. Now these sketches, of course they're not perfect because you're doing it from somebody's memory. It's insane torture if you're an artist to try to sketch from someone's memory. But if you can stop a murderer, then it's worth the struggle. But in the olden days, they used to make fun of forensic sketches and they'd do stuff like this. They'd show this terrible sketch, which nevertheless caught the guy. It caught this man, even though it's bad. And this is true. You can do a bad sketch and it could still catch the suspect. Then they made fun of one of my sketches. They failed to point out, they just showed this sketch. They didn't say that it caught this man. They didn't care. They just said, oh, I hope he doesn't have this for his dating profile photograph, picture, whatever, duh. But immediately when America's Most Wanted showed this sketch on their last broadcast where they showed a sketch, people in San Angelo recognized him. He's got the same mole. Uh, one of his nostrils is closed. He grew, you know, it's like one of his nostrils is closed up. So it was obviously him and they got the reward and the case was solved. My witness gave me this from his memory of a guy that beat him almost to death, this guy. And he was so injured, he died of his injuries after I did the sketch. So this sketch that they ridiculed online because the murderer was ugly, like, is it my fault? The murderer's ugly, right? <laughs> Anyway, it stopped a murderer. It caught him. And did they show some of my more attractive criminals? No. Like, this guy looks okay, but he was trying to attack. He tried to drag a little 11-year-old girl into his van. And all they did was they he was in a black van, and the officials ran all the driver's license photos of people connected to a black van within about 28 blocks of the area. And they came up with this guy's picture, which if you lay it on top, it um, everything lines up. So that's an excellent sketch, which they didn't show. But it's a new day. Oh, here's one from a 12-year-old girl. It looks like he posed for it. Immediately, somebody called it in because now we have Facebook. Now we have cell phones. Everybody looks at their cell phone, don't they? And if you have a sketch, the sketch artist can take a cell phone picture of this text it to the detective, and the detective can immediately release it to everybody in the area. And everybody is what? They're looking on their phone. This is the number one activity that everybody has in common. So they can release it and people can recognize them and call up to Crime Stoppers, which is everywhere, and get the money and stop this guy from raping little 12-year-old girls in Memorial Park. Here's a great looking guy. He stabbed somebody 22 times for a compact disc player. Immediately, his grandmother called up and turned him in when she saw the sketch. She loved him. That's the deepest love there is. But one day she woke up. She knew he had trouble with drugs. She came out and her car was up on blocks and he had taken the tires, wheels. I mean, I'm not a guy, so can you sell those? Anyway, she knew he was being bad. And so she turned him in. Sadly, I'm sure. But look how good from just somebody's memory of somebody they saw. If you can draw faces, you can stop killers. You might be interested to know they just came out with a study from the Journal of Forensic Identification, which is the publication of the International Association for Identification, under which umbrella the forensic artists are, and they get certified with the International Association for Identification. They came up saying, wow, witness memory sketches, which is all I've been talking about right now, Getting a sketch from somebody just from their memory of a person that did a bad thing. They solve better than 31% of the time when cases are worked by a forensic artist, which is fabulous because this needs to change the entire country. There's no forensic artist. The only forensic artist are these black dots represent one forensic artist. Maybe there's some more I don't know about. Contact me and you can join the IAI. But anyway, this is wide open. If you can draw faces and you live in Indiana, Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, New Mexico, Arizona, Little Arkansas. Anyway, I think they have one in Arizona, but I don't know if he's retired yet. But they should at least have one per state. There's 45 states that do not have forensic artists. 
to talk to witnesses who survived crimes and seen a face. That's why I'm doing this video. I'm positive it needs to change. And if you're a forensic artist, this is the most fulfilling career that you can imagine. It's insanely torturous to try to draw somebody you can't see just from someone's memory. But if you're kind and wonderful and nice and you draw faces really well, you can do it. Fingerprints, which are supported financially by all the law enforcement agencies in the country. There's 250,000 approximately law enforcement agencies. They all carry on business with a forensic artist. I mean, with, a, with fingerprint people. And I want them to. Fingerprints are important. Fingerprints are financially supported all over the law enforcement agency landscape because they've been around for 101 years. Forensic art is new, and now that we have a study proving that 100% of the time when a witness talks to an artist, the artist is going to come up with a sketch in about an hour. But only 15% of the time do fingerprint people even get fingerprints. And then the amount that they solve is less than 1% per case is worked. To recap, better than 30% of the time when a sketch artist talks to a witness and from their memory does a picture, it helps solve the case. So if they say they can't afford, law enforcement agents will say, we can't afford a forensic artist. Wrong, coffee donut breath. It costs more for fingerprints and they solve one thirtieth or less of what a sketch artist solves. And you only need one per state. The states that have one artist are Georgia, Texas, South Carolina, New Jersey, New York, and there's like one or two in California, but there's communities that need forensic artwork done more often. And now it's going to start being everywhere. So if you read my book, Forensic Art Essentials, this is made to teach you how to do witness memory work, which is needed in this country drastically. You can get it on amazon.com. It's Forensic Art Essentials by Lois Gibson. I highly recommend it. It was a great sacrifice in my life to make that book. And <laughs> I made it for artists. It's full of pictures. You don't have to read too much. You can just look at the pictures. So here we have fingerprints solve less than 8%. It's actually less than 1%, but I'm trying to be generous. And sketch artists can solve 31 to 78, actually 31 to 100%. I have 99% when the officers have been my witness. Let's see how they used to do it in the olden days. Do you remember the Elizabeth Smart kidnapping in 2002? She was kidnapped. Uh, and Mary Catherine back here saw the man and she told her daddy, Daddy, the man who called himself Emmanuel and worked on the roof with you, that's the one that took Elizabeth. So I called and talked to Tom Smart, Ed Smart's brother, who he leaned on emotionally and Ed Smart, I mean, Tom Smart wrote a book, but they begged for a forensic artist from Salt Lake City Police Department for two months and they wouldn't give him a sketch artist. So then Daly Nielsen, who'd never done a sketch before in her life, walks in and offers her services. They get her with Ed Smart and she does this sketch. Her first sketch with no training Immediately when it's released, three relatives called and said, we think that's Brian David Mitchell. Now it's not the best sketch in the world. It's not the worst, but it prompted the tip. But Salt Lake City Police Department didn't take the tip seriously. And they did not look for Brian David Mitchell. They wouldn't release his picture saying we're looking for him for the kidnapping of, of Elizabeth Smart. Newsweek and People Magazine asked them and they wrote in those magazines that the police said, well, we're not looking for Brian David Mitchell. We have to look at everybody. And Ed Smart had a hundred people, one said, and 50 people working on his house. So they, in other words, we're not going to take a sketch done from memory by an artist. Seriously. Wow. So America's Most Wanted put Brian David Mitchell's photograph on and said, he's a person of interest. I remember the broadcast. 12 days later in Sandy, Utah, four people recognized Brian David Mitchell here walking around with two women, one of which was Elizabeth Smart. She's walking around being kidnapped 
and raped and being homeless. Four people in Sandy, Utah called the cops and that's how they got Elizabeth back. back. They got her back because of a tip prompted from a sketch created by Daley Nielsen, who had never done one before and had no training. So people, do you understand out there if you can draw faces really well? I recommend right now just start practicing drawing faces. And there's a way I've described before and I'll describe again that you can approach police departments. Just go in and say, you need a forensic artist. Quote the results from the, the uh, study from the IAI journal. And if they don't have one, they should at least give you a try. And the way you can convince them, do like I did. Say, hey, you get your witness, I'll go up there and I'll draw from your witness's description of somebody they've never seen before. And then they could take a cell phone and hide the cell phone from you and you can draw from this witness memory. And here's a secret that the police don't know. You will be so good because you get the witness right away. Ed Smart worked with that sketch artist two months after the kidnapping. And she helped catch, she helped get Elizabeth Smart back to her family and catch Brian David Mitchell. So surely if you practice with a friend and have them look at someone they haven't seen and come back and you draw with them a sketch of the person they saw, you will be better than you think. Then you'll know you can be a forensic artist and stop murderers, rapists, robbers, and stabbers, and you won't resist. You're going to have to do this, artist. It's the most fulfilling job. I've done over a thousand and that have helped solve the case. This is how it can work. Tracy Lynn Deal was shot 15 times. She lost an eye and seven teeth. She walked through the equivalent of three football fields to save her own life. She was an army vet. She was 31 years old and she was in good shape. And she said, I gotta get up and walk cause I'm bleeding to death and I could still breathe. She got help. And then we got together in our hospital room and did a picture of the guy. And they caught this guy driving her car still. He put a sound system and fixed it up. He was sure she was dead. And they caught him driving the car. There were three other people that didn't look anything like the sketch. And then here he is driving the car and he looks like the sketch. So that's how that was solved from a highly traumatized victim. The technique, which I'll talk about in other uh, videos, the technique is to make the witness feel as good as possible. The holy grail of a great interview for a forensic artist is get to get the witness to laugh. You have to be really funny if someone's almost died, which I'm hysterical if you almost died because I was attacked and almost died. That's why I do this job. So she laughed so much, she almost fell out of the bed and she had her mom put help get her dressed so she could sit and have her picture taken with me doing the sketch and she wrote a, a, a loving note. So that's how that was solved. And now I have a message to you from Teresa Witten. Here's Teresa Witten. She was prettier than me, younger, spunkier, great attitude. And she did sketches with me. She took my training and did forensic art sketches at the Houston Police Department. And she died of cancer on June 14th, 2014. But there's something, a message I want to tell you, future forensic artists. When she was dying of cancer and she knew it, her left arm was almost dissolved with bone cancer. She drove to this witness, a 75 year old woman who had been sexually assaulted and worked the case. She was so weak, she had to drive near the witness's house, stay at a motel all night and get up. And then she called me after she did the sketch, which caught the guy and we laughed and she talked about how much she enjoyed doing the sketch. She was dying and she knew it. In the last few hours of her life, she spent doing the thing she enjoyed so much, which, which is sketching from a witness's memory. Her message to you is this, a, this is an all-encompassing, all-engrossing job like nothing, nothing else. You'll be so inspired. And imagine if you stop a murderer or get back a kidnapped baby. I've gotten back five babies that were kidnapped.
You will want to do nothing else thereafter. So please, read my book. Do some practices with your friends. And the whole country is wide open for you to be a frenzy artist.